Hey, everybody, this is Chris DeFurio with Keys to the Shop. Welcome to another edition of Shift Break. Today's episode is brought to you by the wonderful people keeping your equipment clean and coffee tasting amazing. Of course, that is Ernex. Ernex has been creating cleaning products for the coffee industry for over 80 years. Um, that's a very long time to be serving us in the coffee industry. Uh, they develop products for a wide range of equipment such as cold brew, steam wands, grinders, brewers, espresso machines. They even have the world's first dedicated cleaner for roasters. They work so hard to formulate these products to be effective in each situation and we're so thankful for that. What's awesome about them as well is that as they develop these things, they're not doing it in a vacuum. They, they reach out for help and work hand in hand with professionals across the globe to make sure that what we end up using in the shop is both effective and easy to use. Uh, the bottom line here is that clean equipment makes the best coffee and the best cleaning products for your coffee equipment are made by Ernex. Find out more information by visiting their website at Ernex.com. This episode is also brought to you by the people taking the pain out of inventory and making it simple. Uh, that is Odeco. Nobody gets into the coffee business because they love ordering and inventory. But the fact also is that it's one of the main things that helps you drive good business results. And Odeco is here to help you make this a simple process and more accurate than you ever thought possible. Odeco uses AI to put your sales data to work. It couples past sales with local weather and events to predict exactly what you'll need in the future. Their virtual purchasing agent then automatically places orders based on those predictions. It's automated, centralized, optimized ordering for your cafe. So take the pain out of ordering, save time, save waste, get Odeco in your shop. Go visit this link to do so, odeco.com backslash keys to the shop. All right, so today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about how the customer service professional is not always right. So we've talked occasionally on the show about this us versus them mentality that is created in the shop where we kind of make fun of customers because they don't know things and they ask weird things about coffee drinks and we like to ridicule them for their lack of knowledge and, you know, it's fun to talk about the weird behavior that people have in public in coffee bars. Um, many, many a meme is generated on behalf of this particular uh, reality. You can use 50% uh, Arabica over on Instagram as an example. But the fact is, is that we tend to over-exaggerate how righteous and how right we are and how wrong and how terrible people are. When somebody looks at us weird or doesn't have the utmost joy in their voice when they're greeted in the morning, we tend to take it so personally. Like we've, we've sort of heightened our senses to sort of search and destroy any inkling that the customer might not be completely thrilled to order coffee at our bar. And we'll talk about it afterwards when they leave. And they'll be like, uh, they were rude or you know, you know, I didn't want to serve them again. They were just like X, Y, Z. They'd fill in the blank. You're just, we're kind of on the hunt for the, for a, for a way to complain about the customer. And I think this is a tragedy and it actually creates a bad service experience for the customer that we don't even realize we're doing. And we're feeding a, a cycle of their low expectations of retail coffee experiences. And then no wonder they don't feel thrilled to see us because oftentimes they just see kind of a um, half smile glowering barista behind the bar, um, just sort of going through the motions and almost hunting for a, a way to be pissed at the customer. And what I want to say about all this is first, it sucks that it's a reality, that it, that it happens. We have our uh, group behind the bar and in our group, there is a tendency to gossip. There's a, and it's a toxic behavior. Um, throwing the customer under the bus constantly. Uh, and it's not like I've never done it myself, of course, but it's something that doesn't really lend to a positive experience or um, to a positive experience of the world around us. What happened to charitable assumption or empathy? What about the way that we would want a customer to treat us? Most of the time when we're incensed at the way a customer behaves, we don't really have any patience for that when they're grumpy 
or or whatever. You know, uh, if somebody told us to smile more, we would definitely not take that <laughs> for sure. But inside of our heads, we're kind of doing that to the customer. We're expecting them to behave like a service professional should to us. We're expecting them to serve us with the way that they ask for coffee, with the way that they show up in front of the cash register, with the words they use. We don't have as much patience for them as we do for our own failings. And I think it's time we took a hard look at ourselves and think, am I being a hypocrite? Am I expecting more from the customer than I expect my, from myself to the customer? And I think that's true, especially when we're stressed. We want people to treat us as whole people with context. Can't you see it's busy? Can't you see I just spilled this? Can't you see I'm a human being and not just a slot machine? When we approach the cash register, we've got to shake ourselves out of this um, stupor that is hunting for reasons to hate the customer or to you know, throw them under the bus when they leave for not being the most pleasant. In a way, we have sort of our own um, unofficial Yelp for customers. And with Yelp, you know that customers oftentimes make the most ridiculous statements about your coffee bar. They didn't have, you know, their Wi-Fi was slow, one star. Well, you know very well that you may have gotten angry at a customer for a very dumb reason in the past. Like, oh, they, they didn't look me in the eye when they were talking to me. Or they seemed a little bit gruff, you know. And, you know, one star for that customer. We've defined them into this hole that they can't get out of. Now we're not going to give them good service and things like that. Now, none of us wants to be judged on our worst days, right? None of us wants to be pigeonholed for eternity because we didn't dance to the tune that the customer wanted us to dance to, okay? We should not do the same thing to the customer, we should not try to make them go through a song and dance because it makes us feel better. So the bottom line here is, let's be honest, we're not righteous, we're not always right, neither is the customer. We're all just human beings interacting. So all of this to say, I think we need to look in the mirror more often. I think we need to give a little bit more grace to people and in the same way that we like to give grace to ourselves. And, um, you know, if you can't do that, if you're not able to just... You know, if you're just having a terrible time with people because you just keep on seeing, you know, different reasons why they they are rude and terrible, and every single person just has this potential to annoy you, you have to start asking yourself the question: Is the service industry right for you? And you know, maybe it's not. <laughs> maybe you don't need to be working up in the front of the cafe. Maybe you love coffee, but you need to be working in the roastery. Oh, <laughs> you know, customer facing work is not easy, but it's made harder when we're unaware of our own shortcomings and magnify the shortcomings of the customer. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that this episode was helpful and I will see you here next week for another edition of Shift Break from Keys to the Shop.